add this video to the list of practical 3D prints, I think. Uh, we're gonna be solving a problem, or inconvenience, I guess you'd call it. When you're grilling, you turn on your propane knob, you do cook all your meats, and then close the grill down, and you have to wait for the grill to cool, at least I do, because I don't like getting burned, before you reach back around and turn your propane knob off. Why not, I thought, move that propane knob, extend it to the front of the grill, so that when you're done, you just turn it off just like the other four burner knobs. Honestly, I'm not sure why this isn't on every grill. We're gonna put this thing together with uh, some weed whacker parts I found in the garbage, and about, I don't know, a dollar in 3D printed parts. Okay, so this is the part that I found in the garbage. So what we're after in here is the flexible drive shaft. Let's see if I can zoom in. Nailed it. Okay, that was a very labor intensive and greasy way to get those parts. Uh, there was a lot more to it than I was expecting. There's a couple nuts and bushings that the only way I could get them off to actually just bust them off with a pair of vice grips. This is what we're after here, this flexible drive shaft rod, which is available for like 10 bucks on Amazon. To start this project, I went into Fusion 360 to create a 3D model of a propane tank knob using a few measurements I took. Friendly reminder, if you'd like to learn how to make 3D parts like this for your own projects, we have an eight and a half hour video course called Fusion 360 for hobbyists and woodworkers. You can find a coupon in the description below. Watching this video makes it painfully obvious that I'm not an engineer. I basically had to figure this out by trial and error, but I eventually got where I was very happy with the result. Okay, I printed out just a few layers to see how tightening this up worked. It is like dead on. Perfect amount of slack. Okay, let's go ahead and print the real thing, I guess. Okay, so here it is. Uh, and I had all kinds of ideas how to overcomplicate this part and make it more fun to make. But I decided, you know, make the shape of the knob, cut some wedges, and then just pop these in like that. And that'll hold the bottom side of the knob. So all we do is put this on here. Probably blocking you with my arm, aren't I? Wedge, wedge, like that. that keeps it on there. Our shaft just pops in like that. That's it. To make the grill side of this extendable knob, I just added a coupler and a locking nut to my existing model. This turned out to be a great size with a good feel in the hand. I've got all of my tools at the shop, so all I have is this old plug-in drill with one single bit, and wouldn't you know it, it is exactly the right size. It's a little small. Wow, look at that. Okay. Of course, I don't have my retaining nut back here, but I just want to see if this is even going to work. And oh my gosh, look at that. Forgot to put the hose on. I'm just putting propane in the air. One second. Let's see, set screw goes in. Okay, so the prototype is a complete success. Uh, it works as is. When I turn. This knob here, you can fully open and close the valve. So even with this locking piece, I still can't get the knob quite as tight as I would like. You can see it's just kind of sloppy. So I added this spring that was also part of the weed whacker. So I didn't make the final version. I think I decided the prototype works good enough. So you're gonna let me know what you think. I don't even know what you did. Yeah. I hear propane. Look at that. That is the problem with prototyping, is if it works, it works, and it's not going into production, why would I bother? Hudson, what are you wearing? Is that a diaper with shoes? <laughs> My only major concern with this project was that the PLA material would not withstand the heat of the grill and it would warp or melt. But we've had a chance to use this in the real world three times now and it has performed flawlessly. It works like it should and it hasn't shown any signs of wear or melting or falling apart.
Thanks for watching. Bye. Ever since my now everyone can afford 3D printing video, I get about three emails a month from companies wanting to send me their printer in exchange for a review like I did for the Monoprice Mini Select back here. Uh, and again, no, that one was not sponsored. That was just all my own thoughts, even though the comments will have you suggest otherwise. Okay, so uh, I tell everyone the same thing. I don't really wanna get into reviewing 3D printers on this channel, but I send an email back if you send one and, and I use it in a product, I'll share my thoughts. So far, only one company has taken me up on that offer without a guaranteed review and it is the AuthorBot. What I'm excited about this printer for is the dual extruders, and not because you can mix and uh, do two different colors of PLA. There's a couple test prints from this printer that they sent with it that you can kind of see what it's capable of mixing colors. That I'm not so much interested in. What I am interested in is mixing materials using the dual extruder. So for example, you could mix PLA and flexible filament and create a hinge with a live rubber flexible joint uh, and then use that as part of a bigger project. Uh, the only thing that I don't like is the interface. Uh, I've been very happy with the quality of prints. This was my first print, was a test cube, 20, mill 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter, and it is, you know, exactly what you would hope. Bill, uh, assembly time took me about 45 minutes, just so you know. Uh, they say it comes pre-assembled, and it sort of is, but you have to put, you know, the gantry together, so that took, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. Overall, I'm happy with the printer for $550, I think. I think it's a good value for what you get.